In this video I will show you how to use the PyCaret module in Python. It is a very cool library that has been released a few years ago and it is essentially used to select in, in a kind of semi-automatic way or automatic way the best model for any machine learning task that we want. So uh, the, reason, the reason it is used so much is because we usually have a problem, a classification or regression problem usually, and we want to get the best model. And it's kind of hard, we need to test multiple models, then find the best hyperparameters, and it's kind of messy, we lose time there. These uh, libraries that, that simplify that are, are pretty cool. So in this case I will use it in Python, I will be using Python 2.0 as my IDE, you can download Python from python.com, you can download it from for Windows, and you can download my example from the following GitHub repo here. Remember to also download the two CSV files, user underscore behavior and user underscore desktop underscore mobile. So the reason I, I will be using Python is because it allows me to separate my code into panels that I can connect to each other and allows me to um, separate my project in a nice and visual way. Every panel in Python can host either R or Python code and each panel has an in and out connection so I can connect panels to each other. So for example in here I connected this second panel into the out so every variable that I define in here will be accessible, will exist in this part here. And if you look closely, you will see I'm using a, mo a data frame here, mobile underscore desktop, which obviously exists here. Which brings me to my next point. So how do we run things in here? We have three running modes. So run only one panel, run uh, up to here, and run below. So what, what does this mean? So if we run only this panel, obviously this just this runs and then nothing, hap nothing happens for the rest. If I use run up to here, here it won't have any impact because I don't have anything connected to in. But that means that all the panels that are feeding variables and objects through the in connection will be executed before. So here it will be the same as just running this panel. And then the, the third option will, will really make a difference here. Run below means that this panel will get executed, then this one which is connected to the out, then this one which is connected to the out again, and it cascades down. So as you can see, it is pretty cool for doing complex exper experiments because obviously I could have multiple panels connected to the same out connection. So, so in one thread I could be, for example, removing a few variables and doing some, some tests on models and then on other ones I could be using a d different set of variables or maybe even more variables. So in this example, the, I have a simple classification problem which needs two files. So the first one is this mobile desktop data frame which contains um, an IP address, city, country, times login, job title, age, so a few variables for each for each user, seems to be people, and then we have a, a target here which is is VIP client, so we want to predict this is VIP client flag, we want a classification model that predicts zeros or ones there, and then on top of that we have another data frame here called user underscore behavior that we, we need to read it, we need to import it, and then we need to, to merge the two together by unique person ID. So, so it's a typical scenario in machine learning or data science where we get data from different files and we need to paste them together. This would be pretty easy because we'll use the pandas function dot merge with the two arguments, so the two data frames, and on would be unique person ID. Then I will be just filtering because not everything here is needed. Uh, I am just discarding a few of the variables that I want. And then I finally keep this data frame that contains this VIP client, which will be the target that I want to predict. And then all these variables that you can see here. An important thing that you can see here is that the data frames that are modified or loaded or, or, or altered in any way in a, in a panel, they appear next to the panel that interacted with them. So as you can see here, merge data appears here, merge data underscore filter appears here, and X appears here. And I can also see the number of rows and the number of columns. So you can see I I had kind of had 13, I ended up with seven. So the final thing that you can see here is the PyCaret part. So we import PyCaret and then we pass the following things. So we pass the data we want, which is pretty cool because we need to pass a data frame, not an umpire array. So, so this, this means, among many other things, that I don't need to waste my time transforming categorical variables into um, dummy ones 
or zeros or ones, I don't need to waste my time there, so that's pretty cool. Then I need to specify the target. We need to specify silent equal to true to tell PyCaret that we don't want PyCaret to ask, ask us any kind of question. If, if silent was equal to false, we might receive um, a prompt or message from PyCaret asking us to do something. And usually we don't want to do that, there are very very few reasons why, why we ever would want to do that, so we put it to true. Uh, also bear in mind that if silent is equal to false, that will fail in Python and that will cause some, some troubles. I'm used specifying that I want to use the GPU because I have a GPU, so that, that will make things faster. So here we have the, the two things that are super important, even though they are not strictly mandatory, so you might once you might do do that and that will work but I always recommend doing that because it avoids potential problems so here we specify the ones that are numeric and the ones that are categorical it's as simple as that and then we put uh, compare uh, underscore models and then we specify how we want to sort them so essentially it will produce this thing that you can see here and that's really it depending on what you're doing you might want to sort on on precision recall or f1 uh, in my case, I am happy, but I'm happy if we sort by area under the curve. So let's put it that way. The pull function here is only necessary if you're running things outside Jupyter notebook. Which, by the way, here we're not using Jupyter, so we need to call pull. What pull will do is is instruct PyCaret to load the, the result into the, into there. So if we run if we run this, we'll see an output like this. So all the models being trained, blah blah blah, and then the outputs being loaded in here. As you can see, in my case, so a lot of models were tested, and the, the best one was a random forest classifier, area under the curve almost 0 0.60, so it's not great. Remember that an area under the curve of 0 0.50 means that the model is as good as randomly guessing. So 0 0.60 is not a great, great model anyway. And finally, how do we use this for predictions? This is very easy. We call predict underscore model and then we pass the model that we train and the data frame that we want to score. So in my case, I'm just reusing the same one I used initially, so that X thing there. Of course, in a, in a real scenario, that data frame will come from somewhere else that would be new, uh, new data we don't have the label. And anyway, in this case, you can see the, the scores in there. So final thing, how do we run this? So let's assume we want to run this again. So I can press F8 to clean the outputs or click there on clean outputs. It's the same thing. And then, as I said initially, we just click on run below and then things start running. You can see here on the lower part, the CPU is jumping now to 40%. It will keep going up probably. And now we can see the job that we loaded, it's four panels involved so one two three four zero have completed and this will take some time so now two completed and now when PyCaret runs you will see a discrepancy between what I had before and this because there is some randomness there So because of this randomness, you can see that now the model is, the best model is a gradient boosting classifier error under the curve 0 0.63. So slightly better than before. Anyway, and finally we have the predictions.